Hey guys, it's Alyssa from Planet Alyssa, and I'm here with a different sort of video for you today. I'm also going to apologize because uh, it's going to be noisy, I guess. Um, my dog just came down the stairs, so I don't know if the microphone was picking that up. And it's also a rainy day outside, and um, cars are going by, making lots of noise on the rainy road. So uh, I apologize for all the background noise, like my dog's ears flapping. But I wanted to make a little bit of a different video today and just kind of talk about my reselling journey and how I came to be doing this full time, which didn't happen until this year, until 2015. Um, even though I have been selling online for quite a while. I guess I should point out that immediately before this, um, I, I haven't for a while had anything that I guess could be considered a normal job. Um, because I'm weird, I guess, and have done a lot of like self-employed type jobs. So, you know, just before this, I was doing a lot of freelance writing work. Before that, I had a sales job. I was a, worked for a book distributor as an independent sales rep. So um, even though I worked for a company, I was really self-employed. Um, and so you'd have to go back to like 2008, I believe, to find a time when I actually had like a nine to five type job, although it wasn't really nine to five, but um, whatever. So I guess, I think, I mean, I probably sold here and there things on eBay. That would be how I got started selling online, but I really just dabbled. I mean, it would be something that, you know, I didn't need anymore. So I decided to sell it on eBay or maybe something that I received as a gift that I couldn't use or, or something like that. Um, and so that was just like, you know, a little bit of extra money. Um, I think that's how a lot of us get started with eBay. I got started, I guess, reselling really with Amazon. Um, and I started selling books, Merchant Fulfilled, which was the only way you could sell them back then on Amazon. I think I want, I want to say I started like 2004. You know, I knew books pretty well. Um, I am an author in my other life, although I was not a published author at this time. Um, I did write and did read a lot of books. And um, I worked in a library actually at the time that I started selling books online. I wasn't getting the books from the library, um, but I knew books pretty well, I guess. So that was why I was attracted to Amazon and selling used books on Amazon. And um, so I started going to book sales, um, library book sales, other used book sales that they have out there. And um, the nice thing about books is that you can pick them up pretty cheaply. So um, you're not usually spending a lot on a book. Um, and so if it turns out to be a dud, you're probably only out, you know, 50 cents, a dollar, maybe two dollars. Um, and on the other hand, you're going to find books that are pretty valuable. This was back before we all had scanners, before we all had smartphones. So you had to go by instinct. You had to go by your gut. You had to really learn books pretty well. And so this is why, like, when I hear people saying, like, you know, can you sell Amazon um, without having a smartphone, without selling, you know, without having some kind of scanner, uh, you can. Um, a lot of people don't, but if you were going to do that, I would say get started with books. Um, that's what I did, and it worked. And so, yeah, I would find up, I would end up with books that I couldn't sell because they just weren't profitable. Um, but I did wind up with a lot of profitable books, and you know, more than made up for the duds that I picked up. And because this was a while ago, there weren't quite as many sellers on Amazon. There was still competition, though, and um, so you know, books maybe had a little bit more value. You also didn't have um, so many books available digitally. Um, this is really before the rise of ebooks. So, you know, if you wanted information from some obscure out of print book, the only place you could go was to go on Amazon and see if there's a used copy available for sale. And so I think there was more buyers uh, back then for these books than there is now. Some of these books now, um, you know, you can go onto Google Books and get the whole book for free. So, you know, that does hurt your sales. But at the same time, I would say there's still uh, lots of money to be made from used books on Amazon. Um, one thing that was different, I think, back then, and I, I haven't noticed that anymore, um, at least I haven't experienced, there used to be when you'd go to list a book, if nobody was selling it and uh, people were interested in it, you would find um, it would come up that there were buyers waiting for the book. And, you know, they would have a price set that they were willing to pay, like, you know, you know, $75 or something. So you could list a book at that price and it would sell like that. It would sell within like hours. Um, and I don't think that's a thing anymore on Amazon. At least I don't run into it with any of the books that I sell. Um, so things have changed a little on Amazon, but um, with everything that Amazon now sells, um, with all these apps that you can use to scan items when you go out, there's also a lot of money to be made, probably more money to be made. 
So anyway, um, I was doing that um, while I was working full time and it was pretty easy to do. A lot of book sales are nights or weekends or times when I wasn't working. So, you know, I would go to the sales on my days off, pick up books, list them, um, and then ship them out on like my lunch break or something like that at work um, or on my days off or whatever. Um, so that was pretty easy to do while I was still working full time. It's if you're familiar with Amazon, it doesn't take much time to list books on Amazon. You know, it takes maybe, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds to list a book on Amazon. So you can, uh, you can list quite a lot. Um, and even though it's merchant fulfilling them, that meant I had to store them at my house. Um, but books are also pretty easy to store. I mean, they're designed for being stored on bookshelves. So, you know, you just get some bookshelves and store your books on there. Um, and I just, I, I kept buying more and more bookshelves to store all these books, but, um, that's what you have to do. At least now, you don't have to do that anymore because of FBA. Um, but anyway, so I was doing that, and uh, then I started getting into eBay. Um, and, you know, just buying stuff to sell on eBay, going to, like, thrift stores, going to garage sales, that sort of thing. Um, and I built up a pretty good eBay business. I had an eBay store. Um, and, it, you know, it was still a part-time income for me. I, I still had my full-time job. Uh, so this was just a little bit of extra money that I had coming in every month. And, um, well, my story is that, you know, my parents wanted me to sell something for them. Um, it was something I really didn't want to sell because it was just like a pain in the butt kind of thing to sell. Like, it's something you should sell on, like, Craigslist or, you know, through your local newspaper. You know, I, I don't know if Craigslist even existed back then. But anyway, um, it was wheels and tires for a car. So it's not something you want to be shipping. Um, but they... I don't know, they went to go get rid of them at the dealership or whatever, and the guy at the dealership was like, oh, you should sell them on eBay. And they're like, oh, my daughter sells on eBay, you know, we'll get her to help us sell them. Um, anyway, long story short, that turned into a whole nightmare. It was a scammer. Um, all kinds of money was lost. Uh, I just really, you know, was upset by the whole thing and um, really upset by the fact that eBay, PayPal, they were one company at the time, um, you know, sided with this scam buyer, even admitting in an email to me that the, you know, the buyer used fraudulent means, um, but said it wasn't their fault. Uh, so, uh, you know, it wasn't eBay PayPal's fault. So, uh, so I, you know, ended up being the one that, you know, got hurt, me and my parents, um, by this. So I was just, I was really turned off and disgusted with eBay and PayPal. And so I shut down my store, um, I think like, you know, whatever I had listed, I, I ran it all at auction to get rid of what I could and and then just, you know, I guess donated or kept or whatever the rest. And um, so I stopped selling on eBay for quite a while. I continued to sell on Amazon though. And, you know, even, you know, my work um, schedule changed. Uh, by that point I was going to, uh, you know, that sales job. So I was self-employed. I mean, I still had stuff to do during the day, but I could kind of make my own schedule. And so... Um, that allowed me a lot of flexibility as far as, you know, going to book sales or shipping out books. And um, that's about when I started to get into Etsy. I mean, I'm just giving you the condensed version. You know, this is years of time that's going by here. But anyway, um, I started to dabble with Etsy and really just listed a few things at first, vintage items. And, um, you know, as things started selling, I was like, okay, I can do this and start getting more into that. And... Um, eventually, eventually over years of time, uh, built up a pretty good Etsy business and I uh, was pretty happy with it. And um, then I also, I guess, was doing eBay. Um, my boyfriend had a lot of stuff that he needed to get rid of on eBay. Um, a lot of eBay motor stuff, a lot of like vintage um, motorcycle parts, even some car parts. Um, he had bought a bunch of stuff at an auction, um, or no, it wasn't an auction, I'm sorry. Um, he bought a bunch of stuff, like old vintage motorcycle parts, plus he had other stuff he had to get rid of. He was, uh, he was closing his business and had, so had all this, like, extra stuff to get rid of. So we started listing some of it on eBay, and I kind of got into eBay then. Um, again, I, I don't do a lot on eBay, and, um, but that, you know, I, I started a new eBay account and with that, you know, would list here and there some eBay items. And it was in 2014 that I actually began selling Amazon FBA. Um, and I don't think I started with books. Um, I started with, you know, other items. 
um, retail arbitrage type items, probably some stuff I even had here at the house. And so, you know, sent in my first very small shipment and, you know, grew it from there. Saw like, you know, as soon as stuff was getting there, stuff was selling. I'm like, hmm, this is pretty cool. So I, you know, started sending in some of the books that I had for sale, Merchant Fulfilled. Um, and then, of course, other stuff too, going out to stores and finding stuff, um, whether it be thrift stores or, you know, regular retail stores. Yeah, more so than eBay or Etsy or anything, I realized like Amazon FBA um, is pretty is pretty amazing and there's quite a bit of money to be made here um, but it's in 2015 this year um, that I actually officially went full-time on Amazon and really how I decided to do that was um, I set a goal for myself at the start of the year well two goals um, you probably know about my Etsy goal because I talk about it all the time which is $200 a week in sales and for most of this year, I haven't been meeting that. Um, I have met it some weeks and exceeded it some weeks, so that's good and come close other weeks. Um, I'm pretty happy with my Etsy sales. I think they're doing fine. I also set a goal for myself on Amazon, which was $800 a week in gross sales. And it sounds like a lot, but understand that with Amazon, the fees that are involved and the cost of goods, um, $800 isn't really a lot of money coming to me because I only get a portion of that. But um, still, that was my goal. Um, I figured if I could do $800 a week um, consistently, could do my $200 a week on Etsy, um, then I could afford to, you know, leave my freelance gig, which I had at the time. And, you know, freelance writing, it sounds like a great gig, but I wasn't really happy with what I was doing, and I wanted to do more um, with the reselling and focus on that. And so I set those goals, you know, at the start of the year in January. And by March, you know, I I hadn't been meeting the Etsy goal, but I had been meeting and exceeding the Amazon goal uh, consistently. I don't think there was a week between uh, January and March where I sold less than $800 in a week. So um, I decided, yeah, I think I can afford to uh, to leave my freelance gig. And so I would advise anyone that's interested in doing, you know, full-time reselling is to kind of start like that, you know, work out the numbers in your head, like what you need to make um, to replace your income or to be, you know, comfortable or whatever, and then see if you can do it. Um, also pick a time of year that's not like, you know, um, insane. Like if you, you know, are going to do this um, right around now, like November, December, you're going to have awesome sales, but come January, are you going to keep that up? And uh, so that's why I kind of also picked January, February, March as a time to see how I could do because those are traditionally slower times um, for sales. And so if I could do okay uh, during those months, then I figured I could do okay throughout the year. So it's been kind of a weird meandering journey, I guess. I mean, I don't think I really ever uh, had like a set plan. It just kind of all sort of seemed to happen, which is, I guess, how life tends to go. Um, I still do, you know, writing stuff, um, but I don't have like a steady freelance gig. And um, I don't make a lot of money as an author. Most don't. Um, in fact, uh, as an example, I got a royalty check this week, which is awesome. Yay. Um, but it was for $13.44. So, uh, yeah, that's not going to get me too far. Um, that'll pay like, you know, a portion of the electric bill. Uh, so, so I do need uh, my income from selling stuff, which is pretty good, thankfully. And uh, the other thing I advise is just to be aware of the fees and costs of selling. And, um, you know, like I was saying with Amazon, you know, $800 a week sounds great, but that my profit is, you know, what I end up with is much less than that. And I'll, I'll do a video, I guess probably like the start of the new year, um, going through 2015, just to kind of give you a better idea of actual income um because you know you'll hear people say like you know be a six figure you know seller or something like that well yeah i've sold over a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff this year um but i haven't made anywhere near a hundred thousand dollars because there's all kinds of fees to uh, to take into account and um also you got to take into account if you're self-employed that you have to pay uncle sam um so you know if you are not um you definitely should be putting aside money to pay taxes um I'm not an accountant, but if you figure like about a third of your income to go to taxes, you should be safe. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind too. And when you're figuring out, you know, your, your goals is not only the expenses of the business, but of course your, 
what you'll have to pay in taxes um, because that's something you have to look at when you are self-employed as you will be as a reseller. So yeah, uh, that's my story, my weird, strange uh, story and uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you find it inspiring or educational or helpful in any way, but um, I just thought I would share that with you today. A little bit of a different kind of video, I know. And um, yeah, I make videos every week uh, showing the different vintage items I sell in my Etsy shop, Plan to Listen. And try to make some other videos on selling online. I have not made a haul video in a while because really, um, I've been busy and I haven't been really hitting the thrift stores too much or or getting too many deals. I did go to like a rummage sale now a couple weeks ago, uh, but I didn't get that much stuff. Um, but I did find some cool things. So uh, yeah, uh, I will see you guys again soon. Uh, thanks for watching everyone.